Okay, so task one. Um, they're not so. These are not so much the solution. <laughs> they're more uh, a guide, a guide to the solution. That, that's what I would say they are, uh, and the kind of things you have to write. Because there's no point in me giving you a solution to this. There's just simply no point in it at all. Um, but if I can give you the ideas of what you're supposed to be looking for, because there's no two case studies the same, none at all. So let's just start to think about things. And uh, okay, so task one: explain uh, using the open system approach Google's interaction with this environment. Now, we should use examples from the extract uh, and our answers. Now, uh, approximately 500 words. So we had two of these documents that I'll be looking at in just a second and you should have definitely had a look at them. It's quite clear on the Google Plus page what you should be expected to do. Okay, so the first thing I think that you should do in this, um, y you know, the definition of an open system. Imagine that the user knows absolutely nothing about anything to do with a, an open system, a closed system or any kind of system. So the first thing I would say that we should do is uh, either draw a diagram or, or steal a diagram from the web but make sure uh, if you're taking it from the web you need to reference it in the same way that I was talking about before. Now I don't mind you doing that. Of course you're going to have to use a different reference and structure when you get to the degree level um, or you know some of the other subjects but for me I'm happy with the, the, the way that I showed you last time. Um, it's, it's pretty good. Anyway, a good tip in lateral thinking about this problem is to maybe, you know, when you're explaining what an open system is, and you can get that from the slides and the video that I posted up last week and the discussions we had in class if you turned up, that is, um, uh, draw a generic diagram. So what is an open system? So just completely generic. Now there is one already there, and if you understand it, that's great. If you don't, then get another one uh, that you do understand. Do a bit of reading on it. Now, if you can take that Okay, and you can explain that. Then the next part where you're trying to use, you know, a company like Google to explain the same kind of thing and how that relates, then all you have to do is just change your diagram slightly to show the kind of things in where which Google interacts with. And, you know, that's a good place for you to start writing about if you've got a diagram. You're just explaining the diagram certainly adds uh, a lot of value. Okay, so in terms of Google, well, Google interacts with its environment mainly through its users. Well, I know this because I use it nearly, well, at least 50 times a day. I don't know about you guys, but at least 50 times a day, all the time on my phone, uh, you know, looking at things. Anyway, they know everything about me. That's what Google do, everything. They know my interests, my habits, the shopping. Uh, where I like to go for what? Um, where I like to go, sorry, what I like to watch in the location I'm in. If I'm logged in, they know everything about me, age, gender, the whole lot. They know everything about me. They can see if I have people that in a social setting, well, they'll certainly know that I'm using lots of business pages, which are uh, for on Google+, Plus, which are for the classes. So if they've got that, you know, what do they know about? Well, they know about everything. They know about absolutely everything. They know about, well, for one, before I go down uh, any other route, uh, they're interacting with an environment. They are, we are the environment. We're telling them everything. You know, different types of users that use it. Um, but we're telling them everything uh, about us. So things like um, demand for products and things like that. And then when you think about this, uh, you know, who wants to know about that? Well, investors do. Shops, well, shops. Are, I put shops in there. That's kind of stupid. Eh? You know, commerce businesses, businesses, uh, the media, anyone looking to make a buck, and a lot who are not. Okay, they're very interested in this data. In fact, uh, Ian Barnes up in Moray College, he does quite a bit about, um, or quite a bit of research on web science, which has a lot to do with this. You know, really understanding um, about that kind of massive data, you know, the information that you have, um, and that's how, that's how they work. I mean, that's how Google works. It's free to us because other people pay for it because other people get everything about us. You know, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Anyway, what else is it to say? Well, okay, Google an analyzes us, we know that. But what do they also analyze? You know, other things. Uh, you know, they have other interests. You know, Android, mobile phones. Um, they've got an operating system on laptops I see on television. Um, but they're also going to analyse manufacturers, so ma people who make things, they're going to well, not just analyse analyze them, but they're going to interact with them, manufacturers, and what's available, you know, the new talk, yeah, also, um, they're going to look at new technology underlying Google. So, where we have external 
things or, or environmental variables. We have internal um, variables where, you know, if the system's not working properly, which it is, I'm sure, but, you know, they're starting to get to the point where it's becoming a bit top-heavy, and they're thinking, we've got to try and change this. So Google Spanner's a new massive database, massive distributed database. I'm going to be talking about that in the distributed database uh, course in the honours, um, when we try to build not something like that, but something a bit smaller, um, with the same kind of mindset, but from a social networking perspective. Anyway, you know, things like that. Is it possible to do that? Is it possible to get... Uh, ex is it possible externally to be able to do things like that you know are we going to have to start investing but you know these can be seen as you know internal and external environmental variables when we're trying to work out you know are we going to have to spend a lot of money on this how are we going to get that um, so what do they depend on well they depend on us the state of the economy especially you know the mobile phone uh, manufacturers they're not going to make any money if we can't afford to buy a phone every year Although we all love our phones, everybody loves our phones. My dad's got uh, an iPhone now, doesn't know how to use it, but you know, he's 60 years old. Um, you know, he loves it. Um, my mum's just got a smartphone for the first time, it's an Android phone as well. <laughs> she hates it, but I think she's getting used to it just now. Uh, anyway, is uh, the technology capable of carrying out the requirements? Possible research for bespoke solutions, as I say. But, you know, what about Apple? What about. Yahoo, what about Facebook, what about Microsoft, the reason I bring these in, okay, they're not search engines as such, but Google has its, you know, the marketplaces, Google has its fingers in a lot of pies, and has a lot of enemies, I mean, uh, Steve Jobs said a really nasty thing, I think, it was really nasty on his, almost on his deathbed, as it were, that's really nasty, you know, about Google and the biggest fraud in history, but I think he said the same about Microsoft as well, I think the guy's just pretty bitter about something, but, you know, he's a great man he was, I'm sure. Uh, Yahoo search engine, uh, you know, they've maybe had to change the, their mode of thinking, but they've started to come into the market a little bit. Um, they hired a few people from Google quite high up just recently. Facebook, well, 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 uh, they're interesting because they've got all the personal data about us, not just our search data, they've got everything about us. And Google has all the search data about us, and really they want to integrate it together, i.e. Google Plus um, and things like that. Uh, Microsoft, well Microsoft, could they take them on in the operating systems department, I'm not so sure, it's difficult to say, it's difficult to say, but certainly uh, Microsoft are doing some aggressive expansion at the moment as well, but we're not going to go into that, anyway, they, they differentiate themselves from all of these people, because they're all the competitors, that's the whole thing, so they're, other people they can analyse, or other external factors, sorry, that they can analyse, apart from, um, you know, economies, and whether there's going to be some requirement from internal, from research and development, um, from manufacturers, from our demand on things. Um, but also, the way they differentiate themselves, I suppose, is uh, by a page rank, as you've seen in the first uh, case study. You know, basically, that's the underlying, um, or the hinge, the, sorry, the... I'm trying to think of the word now, the keystone in the business, the keystone in the, the search business. Also, lots of things about AdWords and stuff, where they can make quite a lot of money from that. But that, those are the things that you would add in there. If you're going to think about an answer, you need to add those things in there. And it needs to be in constructive sentences, obviously, not rambling like me. Okay, anyway. Yeah, so, just one last point. I've already mentioned it before. Don't forget that they're best at finding out if there's any demand for something. They're simply the best. If everybody looks at something, they know about it. Um, if you're logged in, they know everything about you. If you've got Gmail and stuff, they know absolutely everything. Anyway. Okay, so that's that, that first part over with, um, no big deal.